Hey and welcome back to part two. So in this video we're going to get a lot more complex with things. We're going to move things around, add a reflection, add some displacement as well to that reflection. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Make sure you're in Cycles Render. Also the video resolution needs to be the same as the movie clip that you want to use. Also make sure this uh, percentage slider is at 100%. If you don't you will have some trouble later on with scaling. Also you can change the frame rate if you need to here. Okay, so let's change this from the 3D view to the movie clip editor. And then we can go ahead and open up our movie clip. So the movie clip I'm using I got from the website Pexels. If you want to use this one too, I'll throw a link in the description and you can download that too. Let's hit Control S and just save this. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is set the length of the movie clip, I guess. Um, so you can press this set scene frames here and this will automatically set the length for you. Um, I'm just going to reduce this down because it's too long. In fact, I'm going to reduce this again and cut it in half. So I'm just going to divide this by no, by two. So I'm just going to render out a small portion of it. Okay, so what we need to do now is prefetch. So press prefetch. And if this bar doesn't fill up all the way, um, you need to just change a few settings. Go to File, User Preferences, and then check System. And if we scroll down here, we can just increase this memory cache limit. And then when you're done, you can just check, say, oh, click save user settings and you don't need to worry about it again. So now it should fill up all the way and you're good to go. So this is, uh, it's good footage, but it has some rain in the background and it's pretty hard to track since there's a lot of splashes and a lot of movement. Um, but I found two spots that will work. So if you're using the same movie clip, it's probably best to use the same tracks. Okay, so normally we change this to location, rotation, but I'm going to use, just save it as location, change this to previous frame. We're going to leave this one checked and also check normalize. These settings should work for this uh, this movie clip. Under marker display, you want to check search size as well. So when we con uh, control left click, we can see this is the preview here. Okay, so if we press G, we can move, things, move this marker around. Just place this here for now. And if we hit S, we can scale this up. But when we scale this up, we also want to reduce the search size, which is this box here. Otherwise, it'll take too long to track if we've got massive search sizes, so keep that in mind when you scale things up. Press G and move it over here. I know this is a decent track. It's not perfect, but this is one of the better places to track. So your first track needs to be on the left side. Now, if we hit copy from active track, this will just save the size settings. So when we control left click, just delete that. So when we control left click, um, it'll be the same size. So we need to place it around on the right side for this second marker. So this is going to be a good spot for us. Again, it's not perfect and there is a little bit of um, shaking because of the rain. But uh, For this example, these two will work fine. So press A to select everything and then go down here. And We just want to track these forward. Depending on how big your trackers are, um, it may, might take a while, might take two seconds, so keep that in mind when you're making your tracks. You want to scrub through the footage and just check the markers don't jump out of place. I mean, there is some rain in this one here, but, but it's not too bad. Same thing for this other one, it's not too bad. So we're going to be using these um, in a second. Let's just change this window now to the node editor. Change this from the materials to the scene tab. Then you want to check use nodes and backdrop. And we have these nodes here. We need to delete this render layer. We don't need it in this example. Now we shift A, go to input, add in the movie clip. Let's plug this in here. And then we can select, if we click this icon here, select this. Don't waste time opening up a movie clip like I did in the first one. Okay, shift A. Let's add in a output. Go to output, then viewer node. Drop this in here. You can connect that up if you want to, or do it the lazy way, which is Control, Shift, and left click. So, for some reason, it's far too big when you click the viewer, so let's just zoom out. Just move these out of the way. Okay, so we want to add the statue to the scene, and it's pretty simple to do. We're just going to Shift A, go to Color, Mix. Drop this on the bottom string, which is the composite node. And then control shift left click on this node and just join that up. Like so. 
Shift A, go to Input, Image, and again this is the same image we used in the previous video. So if you want to use a render layers and append in your own model, you can do you can do that. Plug that into here. Go ahead and open up the image. Let's check this alpha box to use the transparency. And again, it's the same image as we used before. It's just a simple statue image. Okay, so one of the first things, or one of the first problems we're going to deal with is the fact that it doesn't move. So let's jump back to the first frame. And what we need is go to Shift A, go to Distort, and we're going to add a transform node. I'm going to plug this onto the image here. And we need a way now to control this. And we have <laughs> some useful tools here, the offset X, offset Y, the scale, and the angle. Now in this example, we're not going to be using the scale, but we're going to use the other three. Um, let's plug the offset X into the X, the offset Y into the Y. And as we play through, it doesn't move. And that's because we actually need to activate it and make it work. So moving back to the movie clip editor. Now we have these, or make sure you've got these two tracks selected. If we scroll down here, down to the 2D uh, stabilization, just scroll down. Now normally when you use this, it's because you've got shaky footage and you just want to stabilize the footage, but we're not going to use that today for that reason. We're just going to use the track data. So just check this, make sure it's active. Make sure both of these tracks are selected and then press new. So this is for the location. If you've also got some rotation in the screen, in the scene, you just need to check rotation. And then also press the plus button. And again, same thing if you had scaling. If you was moving forward and backwards, then you'd probably want to do the scale as well. But uh, we're good to go. Okay, so now when we play this, if we scrub through this, we can see where it does. Um, it's not working the way we need it to. It's when the movie clip moves one way, the statue moves the other way. So it's a very simple fix, Shift A. Go to color, then to invert, and we can just drop this on here. Let's close this down as well because we don't need to change anything. Shift D, just drop this one here. And now when we scrub through, it sticks to it perfect. Oh, it sticks to it very well. The only trouble is now is the rotation. We just need to do the same thing for the rotation of the. So if we take this angle here, plug this into the angle. And it's going to do the same thing where it's when the movie clip moves one way, the statue will move another way. It's pretty hard to notice, but you can see it moves the opposite way. So again, we need to invert it. So let's jump back to the first frame. Shift D. And as soon as we drop this on here, we have uh, this trouble. And we just need to fix this rotation. So well, this is the image, which is plugged into the transform. So at Shift A, go to Distort, Rotation, plug this on here. And we just need to move this either in the positive or the negative values just to fix this rotation. Something like this. So now when we scrub through the footage, you can see that it sticks pretty well. Now, if you render this out, give this a test render and see how it looks. If your model is jumping about like this, you need to fix your tracks. So go ahead, go back to the movie clip editor and then just uh, create some new tracks or fix the, the tracks that are broken. So the same thing as we did before, just adding a bit of color correction, just add an RGB curves on this statue. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the, uh, the background image as well. Shift A, color, RGB curves. Okay, so I'm not going to spend too much time on these curves. I'll come back later on and fix those, but you get the idea. So now we need to add a shadow um, and also a reflection to the water. Since there's water there, there'd be a reflection in the real world. So let's go to Shift A, Color Mix. Or again, I could have just duplicated the other mix node, but I don't know why. I've got a compulsion for adding new mix nodes. <laughs> okay, so what we need to do is duplicate this transform node. Uh, Shift D, duplicate this and just plug this offset X into the X, offset Y into the Y. And in fact, there's an easier way. You could just press Shift D, uh, Control Shift D, and it duplicates the, the node with the strings attached. 
I don't know, just duplicate this this way. Okay, so plug this into the image, and we also need to duplicate this rotation node as well, like so. Okay, so now we've duplicated this, I'm just going to show you, this is what we had before. Then we added the mix node, and now we need to plug this new transform into the image, the bottom image. And it doesn't look like anything's different, and that's because one image is on top of the other one directly, there's nothing different. So let's go ahead and change that, shift A, go to distort, then flip. And what we need to do is make sure the flip is before the rotate, so plug that in here. And then let's change this to flip X, uh, from flip X to flip Y. And we need to move this now, so we need to um, add a translate node, I guess. Shift A, go to distort, translate. Now I've put this translate after the rotation. Um, if you put it before, you'll probably just, it'll work better. Um, you'll see what I mean now if I move it on the X and Y, X and then Y. If you place this before the rotation, um, you'll just have to move it on the Y. So just line it up something like this. As you can see, it sticks perfect to the to the scene. So it sticks perfect. Um, what we need to do is reduce the opacity. So this second mix node here, let's just reduce the factor. And if you want to get more um, more technical or more complex, you'd add a gradient. So the top of the head would be less visible and the body would be more visible, like the real world reflections. Another thing would be the blurriness. Like if you look at the um, over reflections in the water, it's got some blur in it. So, Shift A, go to Filter, Blur, plug this on here, just increase this, maybe a bit more. Uh, looks okay, maybe a little bit less, I don't know, maybe being pedantic now. Doesn't have to be perfect for this example, I guess, but you want to spend as, um, make it look as realistic as possible. So now, if we look at the, the reflection, it's, it's not moving. When there's water um, in ripples, especially, there's going to be some displacement on the um, or some distortion on the reflection. So we need to add that as well. That's pretty simple to do. Let's just save this. And we need to understand where things are now. So this, this one, this top line is going to be the top statue. And this bottom line here is going to be for the bottom statue. So anything you want to change on the bottom reflection, you need to add it here. So Shift A, let's go to Distort, and then go to Displace, and this is a really cool node, let's just add this here. And what we need, um, nothing's changed right now, because we need to plug something into the vector, so let's just zoom out a little bit. And what we're going to use is this background footage, because that's what we want to use to distort the, the image. So Shift A, let's go to Color, RGB Curves, I'm just going to drop this down here. And then I'm going to take the image and plug this into the image here. Now I'm just going to view this, plug this into the viewer so you can see what's happening. Um, control, shift, left click. Or if you want, just plug that into the viewer node. So what we do, we need to change this to make it look more like a mask, a black and white mask. So shift A, distort, sorry, converter, <laughs> RGB to black and white. And then with this RGB curves, we're just going to play around with this and make a curve so it, it crunches the blacks and white values. So something like this. That looks pretty good. These ripples that are white are going to really affect the, um, the, the image, so it should look pretty good. Let's crunch these as dark as we can. Okay, so now we want to plug this back into, well, plug this into the vector for the displacement. So let's connect these back up. Um, I should note that um, I did flip, add a flip node here to the left before the RGB. Um, I didn't do it in this example, but um, you do need to flip it as well. So now we can plug this in into the vector. And if we increase this scale, the more we increase this scale, the more displaced this image is going to be. Okay, so now what we're going to do is uh, Shift A, go to Color and Mix, plug this in here. And this is going to be for the shadow. We're going to add um, a drop shadow, so let's change this color from white all the way to black. 
adding shadows like contact shadows, drop shadows and other things will help sell the scene. Shift A, go to matte and ellipse mask. Plug this into the factor. Just move things out of the way so you can see things. Okay, so we want to move this around and if we drag this value here, sometimes it just shoots off the screen. <laughs> so let's just change this back to 0 0.5. And if we hold shift and then left click and drag this value, it'll slow things down. So it's more easier to manage, I guess. Or you can just play around with values and just manually enter the values to something that you want. I'm just going to uh, try and fit this so it looks as if it's a shadow. I also want to crunch the height quite a bit since the angle of the camera. So it's not too bad. So since the sun or the light's coming from the top right, we need to sort of put the shadow to the bottom left, kind of something like this. Okay, so you notice that the shadow is actually on top of the statue. Now we need it to be behind the statue. So I'm just going to go back and take this mix here, plug this into the viewer and the composite. I'm just going to disconnect this. What we need to do is move these two nodes backwards so that the, the shadow is underneath the statue. So B to box select, to go, uh, grab both of these, just move these backwards by pressing G. And we want to put it on the background here, so right after this color, gray, or this color correction, that's where we want to plug this in. So just move this over, and let's take this feed from here, plug this into the top value, and then take this and just replace this image. Oh, make sure we don't put it into the factor, place it into the top one here, and then you've got the shadow that's behind it. Now another problem that we have, the shadow is far too sharp, so let's blur this up, shift A, um, not distort. For some reason I always go to distort for a blur, but it's filter, then blur plug this in here. Now in the real world obviously shadows are not that sharp so add some blurriness to this. Say around 29 should be good for this scene. Again you can use different values. So it doesn't look too bad. So now I shouldn't have used a mix, I actually should have used an alpha over node. So shift A, go to color, add an alpha over node. And you can just connect these up the same way we did for this mix node. Or if we right click on this mix node and press shift S. And then we can switch this node, go to color, to alpha over. So it just switches the node. Um, you can just connect it up. Not like this. My, let's press control Z. I didn't mean to do that. So you can just connect it up or you can shift the node or change the node. It's up to you. And now you can change the alpha. So just reduce the alpha a bit and we get a shadow. Just reduce it a little bit more until something that works for you. Okay, so now a problem that we'll have, the shadow is not going to move. When we play through the, the video, it's going to stay in the same position. So we need to do the same thing we did for the statue and that's add the translate node. So let's scroll out, let's find the translate node which is uh, this one here. Again if we press control, shift and D, I think this is only for the node wrangler add-on. Um, but yeah, make sure that you've got that enabled. It duplicates it with all the strings attached. Let's uh, take away the image, we don't need that one. And we're going to use it straight after the blur node, this is where we're going to plug this in. Take the image from the blur node, plug that into the image of the transform and just replace the factor. So again we have the same problem with the rotation so select this rotation node and we can just duplicate this since it's got the correct rotation shift D and we just want to plug this in straight after the blur and there you go there's your shadow. So you're going to do the same thing with your contact shadow with your um, for everything else that you want to move you just do the same technique you add the transform node make sure you correct the rotation and um, yeah should work fine so now you can go ahead and add some more shadows some color grading and just finish it off so hopefully this tutorial helped if it did be sure to give it a like and as always thanks for watching